A second standard filter configuration is known as the high-pass filter. We're going to go ahead and analyze this as we did the low-pass filter by, first of all, forming the transfer function, where, in this case, we'll be able to get V out over V in by, again, using the voltage divider. Here we have, then, that V out of S is equal to V in of S, just the source, times R divided by the sum of the two, R plus 1 over C. Yes. And I guess I should have pointed out that this uh, high-pass filter consists of a resistor in series with the capacitor, and we're taking our output voltage over the resistor. So the output voltage is the voltage across the resistor. And as I've already pointed out, we've got a, devol a voltage divider configuration here, so we can then form the transfer function H of S, which is equal to dividing both sides by V, and we get V out of S divided by V in of S is simply equal to R over R plus 1 over CS. Now, getting it in the standard form, to, or to get it in the standard form, we've got an S down here in the denominator of the denominator, so we're going to need to multiply by an S to get rid of that, and um, then when we multiply that over, over here by R, we're going to have S times R, so if we multiply numerator and denominator by S, over R, we'll get then in our standard form, H of S is equal to S over S plus 1 over RC. We can get the uh, frequency response function, H of J omega, which is simply equal to H of S evaluated at S equals J omega. So anywhere in H of S we have an S, we're going to replace it with J omega, and we get then equals to J omega over J omega plus 1 over RC. Once again, we can form the magnitude of this frequency response, or the magnitude of H of J omega is equal to the magnitude of the numerator, which, now the numerator is pure imaginary, but, but the magnitude of it is omega, divided by the magnitude of the denominator, which, which, once again, is the square root of um, 1 over RC squared plus omega squared. So again, in the magnitude of the denominator is the magnitude of the real part squared, or the square root of the magnet. Let's try this again. The magnitude of the denominator is equal to the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, or that. And the phase of our frequency response is equal to the phase of the numerator. Now, the numerator for the high-pass filter had the S in the numerator, which when we replaced S with J omega left us a J omega in the numerator. So in the high-pass, we've got an imaginary term, a pure imaginary term in the numerator, and that angle is going to be 90 minus the phase of the denominator, which was once again the arctangent of the imaginary part omega divided by the real part 1 over RC. So these then become the two functions, or, or are the two functions that describe the frequency response of this circuit, or the way this circuit responds as a function of frequency. Now, as we did with the low-pass filter, let's see if we can deduce at least the general shape of these functions. Starting first with the transfer function, or the uh, magnitude, let's look at omega equaling zero. We've got zero divided by some non-zero number. So at omega equals zero, the magnitude of the frequency response is zero. Now, as omega approaches infinity, starts getting big, we have omega heading in the numerator, and in the denominator, we've got the square root of some finite number squared plus omega squared. So as omega starts getting big, this term here becomes less and less significant. And in fact, in the, in the limit as omega approaches infinity, this term is negligible and we're left with omega over the square root of omega squared. Well, that's just omega over omega. So as omega approaches infinity, the magnitude of the frequency response function approaches 1. Now, let's look at this phase function. 
at omega equals zero, we have theta of j omega is equal to the 90, that's a constant, minus, now the arctangent of zero over some non-zero numbers, the arctangent of zero, which we know to be zero. So at omega equals zero, the phase function is 90 minus zero, or 90 degrees. Now, as omega starts approaching infinity, we have then theta of j omega is equal to 90. That's still a constant. But as omega, let's see, where's, it, where's our function? As omega goes to infinity, we're taking the arctangent of something tending towards infinity. Well, we know that the tangent function approaches infinity at 90 degrees, so the arctangent for 90 degrees is approaching infinity, infinity or or this term right here then becomes 90, and we have 90 minus 90 equals 0. So the phase term at omega equals 0, it starts out at 90 degrees, and then as omega gets larger and larger, it tends toward 0 degrees. Now finally, let's talk about the cutoff frequency of this circuit. Well, we can go through the same analysis that we did for the low-pass filter, but now that we know what we're looking for, let's just look at this magnitude function. It is magnitude of h of j omega is equal to omega over the square root of 1 over rc squared plus omega squared. And we know that we want to see when, uh, determine the frequency, the cutoff frequency, is the value of omega that causes this term to equal 1 over the square root of 2 times h max. Well, the maximum value of this function is, as omega approaches infinity, we get omega over omega equals 1. So once again, the magnitude h max for the high pass filter is also one. And so the cutoff frequency will occur when this function equals the square root of one over two. One, I'm sorry, one over the square root of two. In other words, when the magnitude h of j at the cutoff frequency will equal one over the square root of two, and we want to know what is omega sub c. So square root of 1 over rc squared plus omega squared. We're looking for omega sub c squared. We're looking for the value omega sub c, which will be the value that causes this thing here to equal 1 over the square root of 2. Now, as I mentioned, we can go through the same analysis. But let's just look at this and see if we can't maybe deduce it. If we let omega sub c equal 1 over rc, we would have 1 over rc here, we'd have 1 over rc squared plus 1 over rc squared there. In other words, we would have, this thing here would be 1 over rc divided by the square root of 1 over rc squared plus 1 over rc squared. So again, we're just looking at it and saying, what is that value? If, if omega sub c equals 1 over, r, 1 over rc, we're just plugging it in to see if, in fact, this term then equals 1 over the square root of 2. Well, we have 1 over rc squared plus 1 over rc squared. That's equal to 1 over rc divided by the square root of 1 over rc squared, running out of room here, times 1 plus 1, or 2. Now you take the 1 over rc squared term out of the radical, they cancel, and we see that, in fact, the magnitude of the transfer function equals, or the magnitude of the frequency response function equals 1 over the square root of 2 when omega sub c equals 1 over rc. Thus, this thing here then equals 1 over the square root of 2. 
So what we're saying then is that with the transfer function in this form, that value right there, the constant being added to s, is the cutoff frequency. Or to say it another way, when you've got a series RC circuit being used in this configuration as a high-pass filter, the cutoff frequency is simply going to be 1 over R times C. Now let's look at this transfer function for the high-pass, or the, the frequency response for the high-pass filter. Here we have the magnitude of the frequency response. As we said, it starts out at 0. As omega approaches infinity, the function approaches 1. And at some cutoff frequency, which is equal to omega sub c is 1 over rc, we've got the cutoff frequency, and that is the point where the magnitude of the frequency response equals 1 over the square root of 2, which is 0 0.707 times its maximum value. And we have the phase function. We said that it started at 90 degrees. It heads to 0. And although we didn't go through and calculate it, let me just point out that at the cutoff frequency, theta of j, again evaluated at the cutoff frequency, is equal to 45 degrees. So this, then, is the characteristic shape of a high-pass filter, a simple high-pass filter. There's the magnitude of the frequency response, and there's the phase of the frequency response.